So how will these sobriety tests hold up from a legal standpoint? Ron Pichet is a defense lawyer based in Saskatoon who specializes in defending impaired driving cases. He joins me now. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat today, Ron. You're welcome, Christy. What are your thoughts on these roadside sobriety tests by trained drug recognition experts? Well, there's going to be a whole array of, I think, various challenges to the legislation uh, right from the beginning to, to the end. and. Uh, the, the starting point is the uh, roadside sobriety test for, uh, for use of um, uh, drugs or, or having detected either THC or cocaine or methamphetamines. Uh, there's all sorts of drugs that the saliva test uh, will uh, enable police to check for. Uh, the difficulty right off the bat is going to be whether these scientific instruments, the, the, the testers they use, are going to be able to detect the active ingredient of drugs as opposed to uh, latent uh, ingredients in drug. Of course, it's only the active ingredient that makes people uh, feel the effects or the high of the drug. So you mentioned there could be an instance where someone is testing positive but maybe aren't impaired, but you also mentioned uh, the roadside tests and many critics are saying that there might be a little bit too much of a subjective nature to them. Uh, how do you think those kinds of tests will hold up in court? Well, absolutely. The, uh, the subjective nature is going to be anything from red or bloodshot eyes would be enough for the officer to have the grounds to conduct the saliva test. and. Uh, uh, under the old laws, as it relates to impaired driving, there used to have to be what was called a reasonable suspicion for that. Um, the impaired by uh, alcohol has now done away with the, even the reasonable suspicion, but the impaired by drug still requires at least that very, very low test. It's not going to be hard to meet that, and uh, once uh, saliva is taken and the drug is detected, then uh, it's a long, long, arduous process uh, for the suspect who may not even be impaired. Do you find that the tests themselves may be uh, on the intrusive side then? Well, when you take it to the level where tests are being conducted back at the detachment, for example, if there is the, the, the test and uh, saliva test and either drugs, uh, THC or whatever are found in the saliva, that gives the officer the grounds to take them to the detachment. Uh, there are tests there, everything from blood pressure uh, tests to uh, muscle tone tests. And then there's a 12-step evaluation process that can take as long as 30 minutes. If all that comes together, then there can be a request for uh, a urine or blood sample. So th the level of intrusion is, is, is much higher than it was in the old days with, uh, with simple breath testing. So do you find that there are a, a couple issues with the legislation itself for drug-impaired driving? Well, there's going to be a myriad of, uh, of issues. It's, uh, it's somewhat ironic, and a lot of the people have commented on this, that the Supreme Court, through the fairly recent case of Jordan, has dictated that, indeed, cases have to be tried within a reasonable time, and there's dire consequences if they aren't. In fact, there's almost uh, there, there, there's guidelines as to what constitutes too long. With the new legislation, I think it's going to bring to a halt the, uh, the, the speed of, of court cases. Apparently, uh, out of all the cases that are tried in Canada, 10% deal with impaired driving, and that was even before the impaired by drug. Uh, lawyers, defense lawyers are a fairly creative lot, and uh, I'm not saying that they're, they're simply playing games with this. There's constitutional uh, ramifications uh, from the beginning to the end with this new legislation. Before I let you go, I just want to ask you about medicinal marijuana. From a legal standpoint, where does that come into all of this? Well, that's a good question. Uh, our uh, parliament in, in our legislation has not uh, adopted an, an exemption for medicinal marijuana, uh, which contrasts with some other countries. For example, England uh, or, or the British system uh, has a specific exemption for medicinal marijuana because you can see the, uh, the, the uh, unjust uh, result of someone who is authorized for medical reasons to use marijuana is somehow charged with, uh, with this type of offense and has a criminal record for it. Well, it is a topic that has a lot of people talking, so thank you so much for your insight on this today, Ron. Oh, you're very welcome.